So there's four parts to problem number one. Please write this equation down. The first part asks you to algebraically identify all of the solutions. Now let's just talk about the solutions first of all. Uh, before I even know what they are, I know that there could be a maximum possible of three real solutions. That means three x-intercepts. That's a possibility. That's a maximum possibility. And then when I think about complex solutions, complex solutions come in pairs, like plus 2i and minus 2i. So how many pairs can I fit into three? I can fit one pair of two into three. That means I could also have a possibility of two complex solutions, solutions containing i and one real solution. The last part of this problem is going to ask you, after you've done all of the work, they're going to ask you to go back and say, what was your solution? Did you have three real solutions or did you have two complex and one real? Okay, that's the last step. So the first step you're being graded on is to algebraically find the solution. So I'm going to circle this number and I'm going to list all of the numbers that nicely divide into 45. And I'm just going to put a generic plus or minus in front so I don't have to write it every time. So it would be a plus or minus 1, 3, 5, if you see anything I missed, please let me know, um, 9, 15, and 45. Okay, so I don't want you to write down the first part. You're going to practice when I ask you to. I'm going to start by testing positive 1. Please don't write this down. Don't waste your time right now with that. I put in the X's just as placeholders. Um, if you watch a video, you probably won't see the X's in there. It just allows me to make sure that I'm not missing any space. So you always bring down the first number. That's one of the biggest mistakes they see. They go, when do I start multiplying? You bring down the first number. Then we follow mama. Multiply, add, multiply, add. So multiply, add straight down. Multiply, add straight down. Multiply, add straight down. Does this work? because this number is not zero. That means that x equals one is not an answer. Okay, so we're gonna practice speed right now, working with your current partner. Brenda, could you start over there for me? Or Esme, can you come over here, one of the two? Working with your current partner. I'll get two in front of you, okay? I would like you to test negative one to see if negative one works. Ready, get set, begin. How many of you were able to get the same answer that I did? Hands up high. So is, does this prove that x equals negative 1 is a real solution? Okay, with your, actually let's do this on your own right now. You have 30 seconds to test, so I've done plus or minus 1. I want you to test positive 3 in 30 seconds without talking to your partner. Ready? Get set, go.
it does work. Now before I move on to the next part, I want to show you an alternative that will only help you to check if it's a real solution. The problem is if you rely on this method I'm going to show you, when it comes to working with imaginary numbers, it will not work. So please watch. If you are stuck and you're like, oh, I forget how to do this, but I need to test to see if 3 works, here's what you can do. If the function, you plug in a 3, it would look like this. 3 to the third plus 5, 3 squared minus 9 times 3 minus 45. I took the original equation and wherever I saw an x, I plugged in a 3. Just watch really quickly. You don't have to type this in. So I have 3 to the third, 3 care, three plus 5, 3 squared minus 9 times 3 minus 45. Whoops. Minus 45. If I get an answer of 0, that's just an alternative way to proving it works. Hands up high if you recognize that. But understand that when we get to working with imaginary numbers tomorrow, that method will not work. So this only works when you're working with real numbers. Okay, so either way, if you showed your work like this and you wanted to prove that 3 works for me, I'm okay with that on the test. But I have to see that you substitute a 3 in wherever you saw an x, you got an answer of 0. Okay, now I'm going to write this as a trinomial. 0 equals the 15 has no x, the positive 8 has 1x, and the positive 1 has 2x's. There's your trinomial. Next, I will factor it and solve it. What multiplies to give you 15, combines to give you 8, would be positive 5 and positive 3. You don't have to worry about bottoms up because the leading coefficient is 1, which means x equals negative 5 is an answer. and x equals negative 3 is an answer. The first problem of your test involves a problem like this. This is just part A of your test. Identify the solutions. Okay, so I have three solutions. Let's jump ahead and do the fourth part of the first problem. Of the solutions you have, are they three real or two complex and one real? Remember, if it's complex, your answers would have I. Which one is it? Okay, three real. Okay, now I'm going to graph them. Know that the lead, sorry, that the constant is a negative 45. Remember, this is just a basic graph, and I'll show you how I'm grading it. So I'm just going to estimate and say here's negative 45. I know that negative 3 and negative 5 and positive 3 are the roots. If you have not memorized the end behavior of odd and even functions, you need to do that. So the highest degree is a, th sorry, highest exponent is a 3, so we'd say it's degree 3, which is an odd degree. <coughs> the leading coefficient is positive. So if it is positive and odd, what does it look like with your hands? Should be up on the right, down on the left. So on the right, the last x one on the right goes up. The last x one on the left goes down. I have three areas I'm going to grade you when you sketch this graph. One of them is, do you show on the right-hand side the end behavior is going the right direction, and on the left-hand side is the end behavior going the right direction. That's one way I'm grading you. The second way I'm grading you is, have you identified the x-intercepts and the y-intercept? Okay, that's two. And your third is, are you drawing the, the right simple shape? So I need to go from the right x-intercept to the middle, and I need to incorporate the y-intercept. So I come down, go through it, and now going from the middle x-intercept to the left, I'm going to go up and come back over. So we've actually done three of the four parts of the first problem. This is the second part. All of this work is the third part, and I jumped ahead and did the fourth part. Now, the one piece we are missing is it's going to tell you to write the end behavior. So on the left, as you go to the left, the function is headed down. And as you go to the right, the function is headed up.
please write down these two problems for me. y equals x to the third minus 8x squared minus 23x plus 30, along with y equals x to the third plus 2x squared minus 11x minus 12. Those are additional practice problems. Most students in the previous hour said to me, I understand it, miss, but sometimes it's not just understanding it, it's can you do it for speed to make sure you get through the entire test in one 50-minute period. So these are additional practice problems for you.